You're standing on the front line of Hitler's Atlantic Wall. These are the scenes you'd have witnessed as the crew of Battery Lothringen were called to their alert stations. The Germans referred to the Channel Islands as anchored battleships of concrete and steel. This site was to play a key role in repelling an Allied attack. Jersey and Guernsey. Here betraten im Sommer 1940 Deutsche Truppen zum ersten Mal in diesem Kriege englischen Boden. Hitler's delight at capturing a piece of British soil was equaled by his determination to hang on to it. His propaganda teams had a field day with images like these on the streets of Jersey and Guernsey. But Ireland commanders believed Winston Churchill would order a counter-attack. Thousands of extra troops were shipped to the islands. And around the coastline, engineers began to construct a chain of elaborate defences. Defences that would be supported by heavy artillery. Battery Lothringen, manned by Navy gunners, was one of those sites. Guns brought from an elderly German battleship commanded sea approaches to St. Helier. Sixty years on, these fortifications have become part of Jersey's landscape. Author Paul Bernal has helped research and restore them. When you leave the command bunker, one of the first objects you'll see is this a huge rangefinder turret. Inside here, this instrument helped the gunners work out how far away their target was. Directly in front of this were two smaller periscopes which told them the direction the target was travelling in. And during the war, this whole area was camouflaged with branches, foliage, making it virtually invisible from aerial reconnaissance. By September 1944, there were a total of nine coastal artillery batteries in place on Jersey. Eight of these were manned by the Army, and one was manned by the Navy. And this is it, Battery Lothringen. The whole battery was one just like a land-based battleship, and this was the number two gun position. But the gun you see here isn't a Battery Lothringen gun. It's actually a German Army field gun that was emplaced on the east coast of the island. Of course, all of these gun positions weren't just standalone. Each one was supported by a series of underground ammunition bunkers and personnel bunkers. And here we have the 65 metre ramp leading down to the two reserve magazines. This whole site remained buried for some 56 years. When the Occupation Society finally got permission to excavate it, we removed some 500 tonnes of infill over a period of a day and a half. As we come down the ramp, we come to one of two identical ammunition bunkers. Each bunker consisted of two rooms, one for the shells and one for the cartridges. They were just stacked on top of one another on the concrete floors. Here we have the original steel cover for the electrical intake. There would have been a fuse board teeing off to the lights in each room. Another interesting feature in the doorway behind me is the actual date of the construction of the bunker, which was 1941. In late 1943, a high-ranking German admiral paid a visit to Battery Lothringen. He wasn't entirely happy with the way the ammunition bunkers were protected. 
So to remedy this issue, the German engineers then had to construct this reinforced concrete corridor to further protect the entrances to the ammunition bunker. We'll see another one of these further on in our tour. By following this footpath, this will take you down to the crew's quarters. In 1944, this footpath was actually a deep trench. We believe that each of the six inch naval guns had a detachment of approximately 15 men. If the gunners had come under heavy bombardment, they could have sheltered in bunkers like these, protected by almost four feet of reinforced concrete. When you're walking around the Noirmoor headland, look out for these plaques. It's part of a project between the Occupation Society and Jersey Tourism. We've set out to explain how Battery Lotheringen worked and to restore some of the sites back to as they looked in 1944. All of this granite work, you see, was done by local stonemasons back in 1941. They even incorporated firing positions so that riflemen could cover the open fields to the north of the site. If you look carefully around the tops of the walls surrounding this position, you might find the name of the stonemason who built them back in August 1941. This is one of the original Battery Lotheringen six-inch naval guns. They were installed here at Noirmoor in 1941. When the war ended, the British Army removed them from their mountings and dumped them over the cliffs at the northwest side of the island. The Occupation Society launched a successful operation to drag this four and a half ton gun barrel up the cliffs at Le Londe. And now we finally got it back home at Battery Lotheringen. If you remember at the number two gun site, I told you about the ramps leading down to the ammunition bunkers. This is exactly what I was on about. Not all German fortifications were built of reinforced concrete. This granite work is exactly as we found it in 1997 when we excavated the site. There were a total of seven ammunition bunkers constructed on the Noirmoor headland. Each of these bunkers had two rooms, one for the shells and one for the cartridges. The original Roman numeral that you can see just inside the metal gate denotes that this is ammunition bunker number seven. Just downhill from the ammunition bunker, there's this emplacement for one of Battery Lotheringen's six anti-aircraft guns, each of which would have been crewed by seven men. In this case, the gunners were protected by concrete six foot six inches thick. In the event of an alarm call being given, they would rush up these stairs and into the gun position right here. As well as the anti-aircraft guns, the battery was further protected by a formidable array of weaponry. We had field guns, machine guns and automatic flamethrowers. The coastal slopes that you can see were sown with almost two and a half thousand mines. The final part of your tour is probably the most impressive on the Noirmoor headland. It's this huge five-storey naval range-finding tower, one of nine planned for Jersey's coastline. The tower was built in 1943. It took six months to build and consumed 5,000 bags of cement. Each of the tower's four observation levels controlled one coastal artillery battery. And that's the end of your short video tour of Battery Lotheringen. I hope you've enjoyed your visit. Most of the fortifications here are quite unique. If you want to know more about them, please don't hesitate to ask a member of the Occupation Society team.